And good morning and welcome to Wesley Way United Methodist Church. We're so glad you chose to worship with us this morning. Let's stand together and sing hymn number 158. Join and sing. standing for the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. So welcome again, everyone, to, uh, to service this morning, especially welcome to all our guests and visitors this morning. We are so glad you chose us to worship with this morning. Welcome also to all of you guys joining us online. We're happy to, uh, to virtually see you as well. Uh, please take a moment in-house to fill out the uh, attendance cards and the pew pads so we can uh, keep in touch with you. Also, take a moment to check in on social media and uh, like our page to help spread the, the, the love and joy of our church with others. A few announcements this morning. There will be no youth tonight due to winter break. Also, no Wednesday activities. However, choir is planning on meeting at 6.30 as normal. Uh, also, if you are able, 
Uh, if you would please stay after service to help remove all the chairs from the sanctuary uh, as we are going to get the carpets cleaned this week. Um, we'll end up stacking them out in the uh, left side, uh, the garden side hallway out here uh, for storage while they clean the carpets. Uh, any help with that would be very appreciated. Uh, the preschool wishes to thank you very, very much for your donations toward uh, both of the preschool fundraisers. Between the Krispy Kreme fundraiser and the uh, and Sunday's Love offering, uh, almost $2,000 was raised uh, for that ministry. So thank you very much for that. We are looking for volunteers for the tech booth for both service. Don't worry if you don't know a lot about it. We can teach you what you need to know. It's a fun, uh, fun way to serve and uh, uh, an important way to serve. So see Tim Straw uh, for more information with, with that. Um, the church directory is now completely online. So it is accessible through our website and through the, uh, through the app. Please complete the information form to update your data and approve use of email and cell numbers and go ahead and create your login today. Um, the flowers are placed on the altar in celebration of Shelby Brooks's acceptance to college. Yeah, it's a good thing. There are many, many more announcements in your bulletin and, and goings on. I feel free to read those and, and catch up on everything that's going on with the ministries of our church. Uh, now let us prepare our hearts for worship through prayer. Father God, thank you for your church in this congregation. Thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed on us. Help us to stay focused on your plan and for us to spread your loving message of hope and salvation from our community to the world. May all that happens today in our worship be pleasing to you, Lord. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our scripture memory, uh, Michael and I have got a little, little skit we were going to do for you guys this morning. We've got, I'm going to give you that one. Um, more buttons. We got more buttons back in. Uh, some of them are scattered about like Easter eggs. Feel free to grab those wherever you see them. There's a basket with them uh, out in the lobby by where the TV's mounted on the wall. Uh, there's some there in that table. And uh, Michael and I are just going to kind of show you uh, how you might share this with other people. So we'll swap roles from our first service. I'm gonna... <laughs> We were ad-libbing it, and I'm like, oh, you, you figured out what you wanted to say, and now I'm going to change it on you. So I'm going to be the button wearer, and Michael will be the, the questioner uh, about the button, and then we'll, so you can, we'll model and exchange. It used to be kind. Oh, yeah. This is a, this is a thing my, my church is doing. Um, we are just working at how we can uh, spread kindness and help other people think on kindness as well, and when I wear it, trying to remind myself to be kind to people um, all the time, but even more so when I'm wearing the button. And because you asked about it, I'm going to give it to you now. Really? Yeah, and For you me? can keep it and spread kindness as well. As well. So what do I do with it? You just, just put it on when you're out and about and wear it, and if someone asks you about it, tell them that you're trying to spread kindness, and they had pass it on to them. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. And you want to get a selfie now and tag your church, right? That's right. There's the, if you want to share your stories about it, there's a uh, a website on the, on the back where you can do it. You all know how to selfie? What? Well, I don't. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it, you don't have to direct them to the website on the back. They should see it as they go to put it on themselves because it's stuck on there, a little, little um, a dress label thing there. Um, but, but, yeah, to encourage them, and I encourage you guys to share your stories uh, as you're posting on social media. Put the hashtag WW. Nope, I keep saying that. Hashtag Wesley Way, just straight out Wesley Way, and then we can hopefully um, share those together. And then if you have a story and you have uh, the courage to, to share it with us in church, we'd love to hear those stories. Uh, Steve Bednars has given away two. Are you in the house? Where are you at, Steve? He was here in, uh, earlier, so I think he's not back yet. He's out. Oh, he's, he's ushering. He's ushering, so he's out. But anyway, he'd come back to get some. I was like, well, how is it going, and, and what was it like? And so he shared about some of his experiences. So we'd love to hear your stories. Share them with one another as we spread kindness together. All right, now we're going to do our scripture memorization. We've got today and next Sunday left with this verse. So without any words at all, we're going to take a stab at it together. Ready? For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, 
And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8. Nice. That was well done. All right, let's see what the words again, and let's do our motions just to kind of concrete it for us. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, Ephesians 2, 8. Nice. Nicely done. All right, well, let's continue in our worship which is, I believe, our kids now, right? All right, so if you're, do we have any kids in the sanctuary today? Any children? Oh, there's a couple of children over there. Perfect. Come on down. (laughs) We have the break. Everybody heads out of town, but we've got some folks here today. Come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you guys this morning. Uh, I brought a piece of fruit from my house today, little tangerine or a a halo. I think that's a halo. Uh, Now, in the Bible, Jesus tells us we're supposed to produce fruit, right? He tells us, uh, he says, he cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so it'll be even more fruitful. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Anyone who remains in me will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So are we supposed to be growing bananas and apples and strawberries? Is that what he means when he says grow fruit? Do you know any adults that are growing strawberries or bananas? No, right? If they are, please tell me because I want to see it. That's fascinating. No, not like this. Not like that it's going to hang off of my arm or anything like that. Like I'm producing fruit and it's just bloop, popping off of me like it would off of a tree. But instead, he means that we are supposed to be doing things that align with what God has called us to do, and that we see evidence of that. We see byproducts of that. We see fruit come from our efforts. So that when we, um, because of our love for Christ, that we're, we go and we serve other people. That's fruit in our community. That's fruit in our church as we show loving kindness. Our, I've already moved the button, but the button that we're wearing, that's an evidence of fruit, right? Because of God's love in us, we're showing kindness to people. And it doesn't look like this kind of fruit. But it is fruit that we're producing, and it comes from Jesus being alive in us. As we stay connected to him and in relationship with him, then he brings about all this cool stuff in our lives. So we're talking about, for this whole year, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Uh, so that's some of the fruit that God produces in us. No bananas, no strawberries, though those are lovely but other kinds of great things that God longs to do for us. So I challenge you guys to see how you can produce fruit as Jesus works in your lives. All right, let's have a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us and for caring for us. Lord, I thank you for these, uh, your precious ones, God, that they might come to know you in a real and sincere way, that they might follow you all of their days. God, help us all to produce fruit as you are alive and at work within us. May we show kindness and forgiveness and love and compassion and generosity to others. Uh, Help us and give us the strength to do it. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys are dismissed for children's worship there in the back with Mr. Michael and Miss Angie. Well, good morning, church. Um, Now it has come time for our offering here at Wesley Way. I'd like to start by thanking you for all the ways that you give to the church and remind you um, that you can still give through our church P.O. box, um, offering box at the back, um, or come and deliver it here at the office. These are the numbers for the month currently. Um, And before we go to prayer, you just take a look at those. Um, Now if our ushers will please come forward. Let us go to prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we give because you beckon us to give. We give because you call us to be merciful. We give because you command us to love our enemies. We give because we seek to be your followers and do good and expect nothing in return. May the offerings that we place today humble us so that we do not judge or condemn others, but offer forgiveness and love. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
Amen. be seated. Come now to a time to share in our joys and concerns together. The things you have that we can lift up in our prayers today. Uh, while you're while you're thinking, I want to um, highlight a couple of them. One, to be in prayers for um, uh, the Hunsucker family as Wayne Hunsucker passed away this Wednesday. Um, and a funeral service will be sometime in March. Um, so if you'll, you'll keep them in your prayers, keep Andy and Tabitha and the kids in your prayers. Um, keep our new music uh, director for 830, if you'll keep her in your prayers. Her, her dad's been battling with pneumonia, and um, he went into cardiac arrest yesterday evening and passed away last night. Um, his name was Harold McGuire, if you'll be in prayers for the McGuire family. Um, 
keep those folks before us. And then also um, prayers for our office manager, um, Elisa Henriksen. Her stepmother has um, been battling with cancer and is uh, losing that battle. Uh, she flew out there this the end of this, this week to uh, spend time with the family, and um, they expect that to be her passing to be here in the next week or so, probably. Um, so keep keep that family in your prayers, too. Um, her name is Melanie Henriksen. Prayers, prayers for her. Um, we've had a couple of folks that have had surgery this week. Brent Stinson had rotator cuff surgery, and he's doing well at home, just dealing with pain and, and all of that. Um, Nancy Ingram had trigger finger surgery on Friday. That went well, and she's um, recovering at home, and we'll see her out and about for too long, too. Other things, Carol. Yes, no cancer. Praise God. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we give thanks. What a great relief. Yeah, yes. Lori. Mm. Okay. All right, Lori's daughter-in-law had hip surgery. Her daughter-in-law's mother had hip surgery. Prayers, prayers for her in that recovery. Yeah, Glenn. Yes, yes, absolutely. People of the Ukraine. All of our military men and women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kim. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, prayers for the youth as they're uh, away this week and our adults that go with them for the ski retreat. Um, it's, it's expecting to, to rain and be unseasonably warm, just like it's going to be warm here. It's going to be warm there, which is not a good combo for skiing. You want it to be cold, so there's snow to ski on. Um, so prayers for the weather as they go and, and definitely for safety. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Michael's sister is um, has a child with special needs, and um, managing that while her husband is is abroad. Okay, um, and just prayers in general for over that 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 topic. We have um, some some ch- we have a, a child here in our preschool that is um, got some kind of. It's hard to say. I don't, I don't know these things, and they don't. The family's trying to learn and figure out, but um, they're they're struggling a lot with her and temperament, and um, it's it's just it's difficult. It's difficult. There's all kinds of challenges. All kinds of challenges. Beautiful gift um, that all children are, but um, there's challenges all along the way, as all of us know that. So prayers for um, for parents and and those with special needs, and yeah, lift that up. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, prayers for um, for Robert's daughter, Tina, with some uh, broken bones and some infection in the leg. Okay. Yeah, Catherine. These are graduated students that have just passed away. Mercy, mercy. Okay, prayers for those families and friends. Wow. Okay, well, let's go then in our time um, with the Lord. We'll have some time for silent prayer and then... Um, I'll guide us through and we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer that will be on the, the screen. Uh, for those that are there with us at home, uh, always, again, you can put your prayer concerns in the comments and we'll take note of those and be in prayers for those loved ones as well. Let's pray.
Lord, we are so grateful to you for how you are moving and working in our lives. Sometimes it is, is hard to see what you are doing, but you are there. You are there and you are working. And sometimes the answers to our prayers are not quite what we were looking for. But even still, you are with us. And I believe that you are working for our good. Even when life is hard and painful, you are with us and you are working for our good. And when life is easy and pleasant and joyful, you are there with us and you are working for our good. Blessed be your name, O holy God. For you are the one who provides for us. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is my provider. And you tend to our needs, and you watch over us, and you care for us. Give us strength, Lord. We are overwhelmed. We are tired. We are stressed. We are frustrated. We are angry. Oh, and just every day seems as hard and sometimes harder than the one before. We're all dealing with um, extra stress and frustrations as a consequence of, of things in the pandemic and changes. And, and <laughs> but you are our rock and our salvation. You are our place of refuge. So help us to come to you to sit in your presence, to receive joy and strength from you. For truly you are our strength, and in you we find great joy. Help us. Help us. Help us, O oh God. We turn to you. No one else has the answers. You alone have the answers. And we... we we seek help and, and support from other places, but ultimately you are the one that we should turn to. Help us, oh God. Uh, for each, each person here and each, each person represented in this congregation and those watching at home online, uh, God, that you would give us strength, that you would um, move in us and bring us peace. Regardless of what's going on, bring us peace. Help us to take a deep breath and trust in your goodness. Lord, guide us as we go into this week. Some are looking forward to a week of pause and rest with the school break. Others, it'll be work as usual, normal things. Others of us know that we're moving into something hard this week. A challenging conversation, a doctor's appointment, an unknown um, an unknown stressor, um, help us. Gather us like a hen gathers her chicks up under her wings and keep us up close to you in a place of safety and of comfort. May we know that you're with us. May we sense you, God, sense you with us. Make us aware of your presence that we might have peace in it. And Lord, we pray now as you have taught us to pray. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
let's stand together and sing hymn number 314, In the Garden. standing for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And let's pray together. God, we give thanks to you for your word that you've given to us. 
that we could know who you are, that we could know of your great love for us and of who you long for us to be. Help us, God, to grasp it and understand it as we read it, as we discuss it together, um, that it might make sense to us and that we could know how to live it out and apply it to our lives. Guide us in our time together. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, we're in, uh, it feels like we're in wing or we're in sprinter right now. We're like, we're like in this crossover between winter and spring and the two seasons are fighting back and forth. Uh, one day last week it was 70 something and literally the next morning, 46 degrees. And I know what 46 degrees feels like, but I was still kind of shocked at 46 degrees and Stepping out of the house and knowing, okay, to run outside in 46 degrees, I need long sleeves and pants. And then I went out the door and went, and gloves, and maybe a hat as well. It's pretty cold out there. It was no longer the 70 degrees from the day before. But sooner than later, it's going to be spring. It is coming. It is around the corner, and things are already starting to, to grow and, and the bloom. And uh, even out in front, some of our trees are starting to bloom a little bit. And I love, I love spring. It's my favorite season. And I love, I love it for lots of reasons, but I love gardening, and I've, I've enjoyed that. My parents were farmers and gardeners as hobbies, and, and so they've kind of passed that on to, to myself as well. And it, there's something, I don't know, kind of it feels magical about planting plants, right? Especially if you start from seeds, you put this thing that doesn't look like much of anything into the dirt, and you put it in there, and you cover it, but not too deep, but just right, and you put it in the sun, you water it, and poof! A plant springs forth, and yeah, Pixie's nodding her head. She gets it too. Yeah, it just feels like it's it's a cool thing, and so I get excited about um, flowers I want to plant or vegetables I want to grow, and I look forward to that time of gardening. But I also have house plants, and sometimes in my excitement for the new plant, I forget about the ones that are already living in the house, and um, and so sometimes even though I know those need to be repotted and tended to, I kind of it'll be okay. It'll wait another, I'll get to that later, get to that later, get to that later. And, uh, and then you get a situation like this here, where that is, for those that aren't gardeners, that's not a good situation right there. That is a root-bound plant where it is trying to grow and multiply, but the pot it's in is restricting it from being able to do that. So does the plant stop growing? No. It just keeps circling and winding and weaving in the pot as best as it can. And so all that all that uh, root that you see there, it should be spread out in, in dirt and all of that. When I finally pulled this pot, this plant out of the pot, I, was, I felt horrible. I felt like a bad parent. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You so needed to be repotted like a long time ago. And it just kept on growing. And from that experience, I, I learned a couple of things from this, this repotting of this plant. Uh, one thing is that we are called to grow. We are called to multiplication. Uh, doing some math is part of our lives as Christ followers. And number two, that sometimes we need to be repotted so that we can continue to bear fruit and continue to grow. So let's look at the first thing, uh, that we need to be growing. As Christians, we are called and even, I would say, commanded to bear fruit and to grow, to be multiplying, to create that as we become Christians, then we are to help others also become Christians and that it multiplies out. Two by two is four. Four by two is eight. Eight by two, look at me, 16. Two, 16 times two, 32, and that it would just continue to multiply and grow and flourish, right? This little plant, boy, it is trying to, and it's just not, uh, I'm not helping it out very much. And this is a command that's given to us both sort of in a biological sense as well as in a spiritual theological sense that we are commanded to grow and to multiply. Over in Genesis, we see that kind of biological growth that God calls us to. As he creates the world, on day three, he, he creates the plants and the vegetation. It says, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds, and it was so. How long does it take a little plot of dirt to become grass or weeds or something growing there, right? Um, it doesn't seem to take too long because the plants are doing what God created them to do. Man, they are growing, they're multiplying. 
uh, birds and rabbits and cats and dogs and elephants and snakes. They're all multiplying as God commanded them to do. And then when God created male and female, Adam and Eve, he, he did the same thing. He says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth and subdue it. And I think we've achieved that goal with our one point, two point, however many billion people are on this planet, right? We have, uh, we have uh, multiplied and, and, and filled the earth. But in our passage here in John, there's a different matter at hand that God is calling to us to, right? He's not challenging all of us to become gardeners, but that we would in a, become spiritual gardeners, that we would be about growing and bearing fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We're called to uh, multiply and, and to share our faith. So it begs the question for us to, to ask ourselves, who in my life am I influencing and nurturing for them to grow in faith in Christ? And, and we should all be able to put down at least one person that we are sharing faith with. And that absolutely can be your spouse or your child or your neighbor or your coworker. Those are absolutely acceptable persons. But there's all sorts of people. You know, the more we share with others, the more it spreads and multiplies. Uh, you know, it, the, if you read the book of Acts, it's, it's incredible to see how the message and the Word of God spreads. I mean, it starts in Israel and then just whoosh, takes, takes over on through, through Europe. And um, those, those disciples continued to share and tell others, and those people told others, and congregations grew and the Word spread. Who are you influencing that they might know who Christ is and become a Christian themselves. You don't have to stand on a street corner with a bullhorn to accomplish that, that command, to, to accomplish that task. It's, it's daily living. Sometimes it's subtly done. Sometimes it's just you, you know the person, you know the individual, and so you, you're, you're putting it in there quietly and, and, and uh, not sneakily, but, but you're clever about it. So you don't want to push that person away or turn them off, but you also want them to know about Jesus. So you're thinking about how you present the gospel to them. And then there's other people that we're like right up in their face about it, very honest and straightforward about it, and, and um, even aggressive perhaps in how we share our faith. Um, but if you can't think of a single person that you are influencing and sharing faith with, then you need to ask yourself a second question. Am I really fulfilling the call of being a Christian? Am I, am I honestly, can I call myself a Christian if I'm not, if there's no multiplication in my life, if, if I'm not influencing and sharing Christ with somebody? Because that's clearly part of the thing, that we would bear fruit, that we would... Um, like I was telling the kids, not have tangerines and bananas popping out of off our fingers and, and coming out of weird, I don't know, out of your ear or something. That would be interesting. If just bloop, bloop, strawberries. I would not want, don't share those strawberries with me. If you have strawberries coming out of your ears, I don't want, I don't want to have, <laughs> you can keep them to yourself. Uh, no, we're to produce, produce fruit in keeping with repentance, right? That we're uh, showing kindness to others, that we're sharing Christ with others, that we're showing compassion, that we're showing generosity, that we're forgiving one another and, and so on and so forth. I have one plant at home right, right now that needs to be repotted, and it is so, it's being so faithful to God's call on it to grow and to, to have life and to multiply that it is literally splitting the pot it's in. There, it's a plastic pot, and it's not a very thick plastic pot, and it's got a, a crack, a seam that is splitting where the plant is ever so slowly pushing out against that plant, and it's continuing to grow. How are we multiplying in the faith of Christ? Which, so that's that next question is, then sometimes to continue to grow, we need to be repotted. Or in this passage, Jesus talks about pruning back the plant so that it can be even more fruitful. Sometimes for us to continue to grow, we need to try some new things. Try some new things. Uh, I've, I've encouraged congregations to experiment in their, in their faith. To, you know you have a difficult person that you have to deal with on a regular basis, then as you are about to have interactions with that person, pray. 
pray before those interactions. And mon- go back later as you would as an experiment and go, all right, well, this is kind of what happened, and here's what my, okay, I'm going to you know, change my pattern. I'm going to do this. You know, be methodical about it, as Methodists would be methodical. And try something, try something new. You might uh, pick up a new devotional book. You might um, decide to serve in a way that you've never done before or that kind of feels out of your comfort zone where you might learn and learn something new and grow in a different way. I picked up a book in our yard sale back in October, um, and it's called Rediscovering the Saints, 25 Questions That Will Change Your Life. And maybe one of you guys donated that book. I don't know. But it's by uh, Matthew Kelly, and it's, a, it was a, it's a designed as a Catholic resource. And, um, and I was just curious, because that was a curious title to me. 25 questions that will change your life. That makes us go, well, what, what are those questions? I want to know what those questions are. And, and so for 25 short chapters in this, in this book, the author gives a brief insight into the lives of saints uh, recognized by the Catholic Church, many of them who lived a long time ago, and touches on kind of a lesson from that person's life. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm United Methodist. I haven't thought much about the saints recognized by the Catholic Church, and but I know some of them, and you know some of them just from interactions in the world and things that are on the calendar. And that was that's been an interesting process for me to just learn about some of these real people who had faith and a passion for Christ and what they were compelled to do with that. And I've, I've enjoyed that, but I might not have thought about that much because it's a Catholic resource and not a United Methodist resource. Now, I don't stick strictly to United Methodist stuff, but you follow my meaning. Sometimes you need to be repotted to continue to grow. You need to try something new. Um, maybe you've never tried fasting before. Well, we're coming up on Lent here. It's a, it's a neat process. And you're like, mm-mm, no, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. That sounds too, too painful, too trying. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. But it can be a really eye-opening learning experience for you to see the things that you're attached to and, and um, how those things control our emotions, how those things control our behaviors and our activities, when, in fact, we should be uh, controlled by the Spirit of the Lord, right? So you might do something like that. And, and you don't have to give up all meals while the sun is up and only eat once the sun has set. You can do something more, more simple than that, like give up ranch dressing or sweet tea or just drink water for the whole month or the whole, the whole season of Lent and put aside other beverages. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can interact and experiment with your faith in, in Christian ways to seek to be potted in a different way. Try something new. One of my seminary professors, uh, when I, I remember discussing with him about my devotional life and how it felt stale, and I was kind of bored with it. And he said, so do something different. Pick up a different book. Pick up a different habit. If you've been doing it in the morning and you don't like that, do it in the afternoon. If, if the evening is better, then sit down in the evening when maybe it's quieter for you. Um, feel free to have permission to try something different. So I give you permission to try something different. That was so freeing for me. I was like, oh, I don't have to finish this book that I don't like that's boring and I'm just struggling through it. No, you don't. Move on to something else. If you're reading Deuteronomy and you're like, I just, do, I just can't, then move over to Psalms or 1 John or Ephesians. You know, uh, all of the Bible has meaning, has value, but if <laughs> where you are in that moment in time is, is difficult, then, then move to a different place. Don't just go, oh, I'm just, I just can't. I'm not going to. Move to a different book in the Bible. If the, if the spiritual book that you're reading, uh, written by one particular author, is not doing it for you, then take it to goodwill and get something else. You know, you may just need to be repotted. Uh, if you're struggling here at Wesley Way and you're like, I'm having a hard time being in this church, and it's just, I, I'm, when, and I say read, be potted, read, I don't want you to go somewhere else, come and talk to me about what you're struggling with. Because there's probably a good chance that someone else is struggling with that thing too. And maybe there's something we need to look at. That's why we're trying this year to, to look at how we can bring joy and excitement back because we kind of got bogged down in just maintaining things. Uh, that's an initiative for us. That's a way for us to kind of get repotted. Talk about it with one another. Encourage one another to try something new. All of us are called to be multipliers. All of us are called to be growing spiritually, to be sharing our faith with other people. Um, look at the multiplication. Is it present in your life? And if it's not, what needs to change for that to happen? 
get intentional about it. Make a list of people that you interact with on a weekly basis that you could share your faith with and, and write out a plan. Okay, I'm just going to, in very small ways, I'm going to start doing this or I'm going to start uh, putting stuff on my, my social media page. I'm going to put Bible verses or, you know, just figure out a, a plan of action for it and then look at how you might continue to grow in your own faith, which may be in a different pot and let us continue growth in the kingdom of God. All right, let's pray together. Oh, Lord Christ, uh, we thank you that you have called us to more than stagnancy and repetition. But you have called us to grow in our faith, to share what we are experiencing with you with others, to learn and to grow. Bear fruit in us, O Christ. Move in and through us with your mighty power, that the love and the excitement we have for you might be refreshed and renewed, and become something that's just infectious and contagious for us to share to others. We just we can't help but seem to share it because we're so happy and joyful in you. Guide us, O oh God. Our days are challenging, but you provide us with joy. Give us an opportunity to share it. For it's in Christ we pray. Amen. As we close in our worship this morning, uh, know that you can come and kneel and pray about whatever is on your heart today may have nothing to do with what we've been discussing. But if God wants to speak with you, I hope you'll take the opportunity. Let's stand as we sing. And let's sing together hymn number 555, Forward Through the Ages. this place. May you receive the love and the joy that comes from Jesus Christ. May he continue to grow inside of you and produce his fruit that all may know that Christ is Lord. Amen.